You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Thank you for joining us here on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. And on this episode of Making a Difference, we head back into the world of journalism and discuss publication. We have Angelina Cappiello, who is the publisher, editor in chief, and one of our sponsors on our program today. She's also my boss, so I'll have to go a little easy on her. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. So nice to see you. We're so happy to finally have you on this program. Now, Angie worked for New York Post for how many years, Angie, were you a reporter there? Wow, that was a long time ago. But yeah, I want to say, I think it was about six years. Wow. Six years. That's an iconic publication. How was it being a part of that uh, team? You know, I loved it. I mean, listen, I was very idealistic going in and I wanted to be a journalist and report the truth and every all those good things that, you know, you want to do and, you know, um, but I did start a month before 9-11. That's so, right. <laughs> so, you know, going in green and then having 9-11 and the world just falling apart and, you know, everybody freaking out, and, you know, terrorism, you know, racism, uh, the economy, like we were just so thrown into this different world. And it was, you know, a little tough, like, you know, being like a new journalist, having to report about all these terrible things. I mean, and usually the, you know, the news does report terrible things on a daily basis, but this was like a mecca of all terrible things that could happen to you, especially just starting out journalism. Of um, course. But aside from that, you know, I feel like I just, I have a great love for journalism. Every day is new. Uh, you learn something new every day. Yes. You know, you're, you're talking to, interviewing wonderful people, you know, anywhere from, you know, the president to, you know, the guy down the, the block, like, you know, so it's you interview, really, you interview, sorry for interrupting you, but you did interview the president. Which president did you interview? Bill Clinton? I did get to, yes, I did get to speak with Bill Clinton at the wow. time. He wasn't the president at the time, but I did get to speak to him in a, in a separate interview. And that How was is he? Is he kind? He, he was kind. I mm. guess he's a handsome man in person. <laughs> <Back then. laughs> but um, yeah, we weren't talking about that when I interviewed him. So. Oh, that's it. That's so nice. You got thrown in, and that's. I think that's the best way to learn is just to get thrown in and just figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, you're right. And they, they say that about swimming, right? So it's kind of the same thing. Like you learn to swim just by getting in there, and it was a great experience. And really. Thank God for the people that I work with because journalists have a great sense of humor about life. Yeah. And, you know, thank God, you know, it, it's tough. And there have been days where I've interviewed people and I just wanted to break down, especially that this was happening to my world as well. It's not something that you can normally just, you know, take yourself and put yourself apart from, you know, it's, it's hard to do that um, when there's a lot of tragic things happening around you. So um, thank God for them because they made me laugh. You know, we went out for a couple of drinks, like, you know, it was just like something that, you know, it, it was a good, good group of people to be around. We come across a lot of celebs who have false information out there about themselves and they're very angry. I mean, understandably. So like we wanted to get Christy Turlington for your magazine and uh, there is a uh, health issue that she has COPD and emphysema. And she doesn't because that's what her her publicist told us. So working for you, you require detailed research and accurate quotes from our subjects. Uh, being a journalist with a lot of fake news out there, what does it mean for you to get the most accurate information uh, out there? It's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not in the business of publishing gossip. So that's not what we're here for. You know, as a health publication, I really want to get the most accurate information, whether that be from 
our government, you know, sources to leading top doctors. And that's what we're really here for. You know, it's Preferred Health Magazine for a reason. I want to be real. I want to have this company built on honesty and integrity. And I think that's what's important in journalism. It's a hot new magazine. Uh, please head over to www.preferredhealthmagazine.com and subscribe. It really is. I'm just uh, very honored to be a, a part of this. And, uh, and I thank you all the time. You know that. Uh, thank so, you. We're happy to have you. <laughs> thank you. So uh, I wanted to know, um, why did you choose health, Angie? And what do you want your readers to take away from when they're reading your magazines in doctor's offices or what have you? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really... The magazine came out organically just from my many years. After journalism, I spent a lot of time in branding, publishing, and PR, um, but working with a lot of healthcare um, doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers. So I've been involved in the healthcare industry before. And it just kind of organically came about that, you know, this magazine, I wanted to really push that agenda of educating people. I think, you know, health education is really important and this is a great means of having, you know, that information out there to the readers. So um, that's how it came about. And then, you know, just health is, you know, our, our greatest gift. So, you know, why not? You know, this is a great topic. It's, it doesn't have to be depressing. Like, you know what I mean? This is all, you know, what we want to do is like educate people and just get that accurate information out to them. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the other question? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want your readers to take away from? I'm sorry, I do two parts. I'm sorry, I'm usually asking you the questions. <laughs> I know. You're so fun. The question is, uh, what do you want your readers to take away um, from your magazine? I, I want them to learn. I want them to say, hey, you know, I didn't know that was available to me. I didn't even know that was out there. I didn't know that treatment was out there. I didn't know that study even existed. Um, and so they learn just like we're learning every day. And that's the whole point. It's like, you know, I don't come into this as a physician. I come into this from a journalistic standpoint. So I am learning as well. And that's what I want to give back. I want to give that out to somebody. And we're finding... Yeah, we're finding content. I mean, we have content in there, GBS we spoke about. Uh, we spoke yes. about Botox in, in the jaw for uh, TMJ. For bruxism and TMJ. Right? Yeah, I mean, what other topics do we, we speak about things that are out of the ordinary. We're, fi we're constantly finding content. Yeah, you know, I want to talk about things that people are thinking. You know, when, when we were having all these riots going on around the world, I wanted yes. to talk about mob mentality. Nobody's really speaking about this mental health. And there, that is an important issue. Yes, there are reasons, you know what I mean? Let's talk about, but also what happens, you know, when you're involved in this crowd, like there is something happening that you might not be aware of. And so I just really, I like those interesting topics. I really do. Even, even just in the last issue, I personally went and got um, one of the ID treatments. And I think that was a great way. People might not know that's available. You can go to a physician's office that offers it, obviously, and have vitamin C, vitamin D, all those good vitamins that help with your immune system go directly into you. You know, when we take vitamins, we only absorb a certain amounts. So and then right. your body excretes the rest. So, but this is 100% intake of those vitamins. And what a great way and what a great thing to have available to you that might benefit your health. So what do you look for uh, when you have a writer and a reporter work for you? Um, good question. I look for somebody who is curious. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most important part of, of being a, a journalist is that you're curious. You want to learn. You want to find out. I mean, if you're curious, you're probably going to ask all those good questions. Tell us uh, about the impact that your mom had on you in your adult life because uh -huh. mom, mom passed away. Yeah. Mom passed away. I think it's going to be 13 years after yeah. this this year. Wow. Um, it's crazy. It's just crazy not that she's not in my life. Um, at this point, she died. She was 60 years old. She died pretty young of leukemia, as you know. If you knew my mother, she loved you and you felt it. Yeah. And that was one of the blessings that she gave to us, or, you know, the children is that we always knew that we were loved by her. And that yeah. was so important. And it's something that is so important to me with my children 
Um, Cause it was really what's important like, as a, as a parent that your children know that they're loved and cared for. Yeah. And that's what she did. But besides that, you know, there were some lessons along the way. My mom was um, a very kind person in, in a world that isn't so kind. Yeah. And she always said to me, um, you know, don't judge people, you know, don't judge people by their color, their weight, their size or whatever, you know, their clothing, like try to always find the good in people. My mom was very headstrong. She was a go-getter and she believed in her children that we can be anything we wanted to be. And so she always gave me that encouragement to just do what I love and love what I do. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I would be all right. And, um, and that, that's really what I took from her. And she was very good at making baked macaroni and cheese and rice balls and, rice balls and Spanish rice and beans because she was yeah. Puerto Rican. Yes. But she wasn't very good at that, actually. I she loved it. Italian. You, really? You're talking to a white girl. That was good. <laughs> I loved her Spanish rice and beans. I'm pretty sure it was almost microwaves. <laughs> That's okay. I loved it. I now, mean, you grandma, know. Her mom, she made it the right way. Grandma but Juanita. No, my mom said she learned how to cook through my father's mother, which is the Italian side. Oh, wow. So, so she actually was a great Italian cook, my mom. She, she can cook some Italian meals, but. Yeah. <laughs> well, you make, you make a mean baked macaroni and cheese. And I think that's I her think, recipe. Yeah, that's her recipe. That's I right. love it. I love it. Uh, what do you want your children to learn about uh, social media news and information that is distributed uh, to their to them? Um, well, you know, we we don't really watch the news with the kids. OK, I have a teenager at home and a seven year old. We you know, the teenager obviously is hearing things, learning about things. We do discuss topics and and what's important with her. And I'm not sitting there after work and listening to the news for hours. It's just not even healthy. Okay. I just don't even think anybody should do that. Um, you know, 20 minutes a day, get, get what you need to know about what's going on in the world and let's move on with life, you know, what's right. more important. Um, so with her, yeah, you know, we, we've had to speak to her about, you know, what was going on last year with all that, you know, what was going on, people dying, you know, things in the news that were happening, the whole Trump, you know, Biden, you know, yeah. fiasco. So what's important to me is not that she chooses a side, you know, I don't choose a side. I don't, I don't, I vote independent. I don't vote for any specific party just because. Um, so I try to my best to just, and me and my husband both do this, just to give her both perspectives. We always want to make sure she understands both sides. Sure. So that way that, you know, whatever she genuinely feels, you know, is what she feels. Right. That's who she is. Yeah. You know, we might not agree. We might agree. We don't know, but we always want to make sure that she's not just listening to what she's hearing in school, or she's right. not just listening to what she's hearing from her friends, but that there is a whole spectrum of, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, the truth, their truth, and the real truth. So that's what we try to, you know, instill in our children. Nice, is, nice. Is, you know, their ability just to think for themselves. Yeah, yeah, you guys are grow a bit, both great parents. Uh, so thank yeah. you for growing up amazing children. Uh, now, what are, your, <laughs> what are your plans for the magazine? So listen, I feel like we're just getting started, okay? We really are just getting started. We've had some amazing covers as you can probably see behind me yes we've had some amazing people god we've been blessed with that um and i just feel like there's so much more to do luckily for us as a magazine we don't need everything by you know 3 p.m we don't need everything done in the next hour we have the luxury of having those long deadlines and what i'd like to do and what i feel like we started you know tinkering with a little bit more is just more in-depth stories about you know topics. Like we had just recently had um, a doctor, Patricia Broderick, on um, the COVID brain. And yes. that's something that we want to discuss. We want to discuss how COVID is actually affecting us even yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So that was an important topic. And we were able to actually publish her studies on it. So I was really proud about being able to do that. Um, and then, like I said, like other issues and just really diving in a little bit further. So that way when somebody's reading, they really again, get the full perspective. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. Now, Angie is also a poet, a longtime poet. This show, <laughs> we have a lot of poets come on. Um, I'm all about poetry. I love it. So yeah. please tell us about the poem that you wrote and you're going to be reading for us. Okay. So let me just first say that poetry has always been a great way of me, even as a young adult, to just express what I was feeling about what was happening in my life and obviously, you know, things around the world. So this poem is, I want to say, based off of last year, even still going into this year, and all the kind of back and forth, you know, turmoil that we've all heard about or experienced. Yeah. Dear brothers and sisters, it's easy to see, it's all too clear. Ego is the enemy of the soul and the root of all fear. People speak louder but don't hear the pain of the stories passed down the strain of lives lived off a half-filled cup? When will we really wake up? We watch in 4K, but remain totally blind. We cover our ears to the voices of the abused and the lost and let hatred corrupt our minds. Who told you one is better? Who says we're unalike? We go around praising people who may never understand our plight. And now we're hurting one another just so we can say who's right. Take God out and you've lost before you began. Take love out and there will never be an end. Making a Difference is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Please visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today and subscribe. Mm -hmm.